Welcome to Interviews to Suit with your host, W. Dennis Suit. Today's guest is veteran representative Bill Hembry of Winston, Georgia, who's running for the Senate District 30 seat. Today we welcome Bill Hembry, who is running for the District 30 Georgia Senate seat. Bill, I see you were born in Villa Rica, Georgia, graduated from Douglas County High School, and went on to earn a bachelor's degree with honors at William and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. That's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've told him from your bio, you know, so I see uh, you, uh, your, you and your wife, Beth, reside in Winston, Georgia. Right. Have three sons, uh, two twins that are 12-year-old. Be 12 uh, this month, and, yes. And, a, and an older 17-year-old. Yes. Mm-hmm. I bet he's giving you problems. No, he's actually a good kid. <laughs> well, good. Well, tell us about you a little bit about your family. Uh, where did you meet your wife? Well, I met her during a tornado drill at, uh, at high school. And uh, so uh, we started our uh, romance back in 1983, 1984. And it, it's been a great uh, relationship and mm-hmm. three wonderful kids and 21 years mm-hmm. uh, of marriage. Mm-hmm. How long did you have to pursue her? Uh, a long time, a actually, long time. a long time. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, um, you, um, well, about lose my glasses here. Um, you have just refined your, you have just resigned your your house seat, and I guess you were there for seventeen years and on some very key committees. Right. Um, uh, and you obviously had a pretty, I, I think, in political terms, you had a, probably had a pretty good, you had a safe seat. You weren't likely to get voted out next week. And, um, so why did why risk why risk the Senate seat? Well, I, I, first of all, I just always I believe in public service and always have. And uh, I met Ronald Reagan when I was a senior in high school. We we're talking about uh, mm-hmm. meeting my wife that same year. I met Ronald Reagan, and by by chance, uh, I, I worked my way through the Secret Service at the uh, Omni in Atlanta for a rally, and the Secret Service were so amazed that I was able to get through their checkpoints Mm -hmm. that as soon as the program was over, they took me backstage. Mm -hmm. And I actually was face-to-face with the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. That's great. So that was really the beginning of my uh, my interest. But I asked asked the President one question. I said, Mr. President, you know, I'm just a 17-year-old from Villarica, Georgia. Uh, What can I do for our country? And uh, the President, President Reagan, looked at me and he said, be a public servant. Give something back to your community. Mm -hmm. And I've just taken that calling. uh, And so now I'm running for the Senate because I want to help the people of all West Georgia. And I've been a a public servant uh, for 18 years, actually, in the House of Representatives. And you you don't get an opportunity to help people every day. You should try to help people every day. But I want to try to expand that. And I just, my, my approach is that I'm always on the people's side. I'll fight for the people every day. I'll be on their side, you know, trying to fight waste in government, trying to stop tax increases, and hopefully uh, attract some new jobs so we can get our families back to work. But that's always been my approach in all the 18 years. So I'm running for the Senate because I have this promise to make, that I'll fight every day, every day for the people of West Georgia. I'll fight for them with honesty, integrity. I've, I've been trusted as a member of the General Assembly. I've been steady as a member of the General Assembly, and I'll just always fight and be on the side of the people. So that's uh, that's my core. Uh, That's who I am, and it hasn't changed. I haven't changed in in my time in the General Assembly. I've always uh, pursued the best interest of the people. Well, many of us, me too, sitting here upside down in a mortgage. Fortunately, I plan to live in my house all my life, so it doesn't bother me. But many people are very upside down. And we have a um, non-judicial uh, repossession fee for our banks are in Georgia. And uh, many states, it, that's the judicial process. You have some recourse if, you're, if, if your house is repossessed. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, it's a serious problem for everyone. And we need to figure out a solution to the overall problem. And in my opinion, the solution is to get people back to work. And, you know trying to build the economy and do what we can to get people back to work will enable them to pay their mortgages. And it's a fundamental economic approach, and I just believe it's the right approach here in Georgia. What we're trying to do with stimulating jobs, we've got a program that the General Assembly passed uh, House Bill 386. And House Bill 386 this year 
does just that. It focuses on jobs and the economy. Little things uh, like uh, giving the, uh, the, the tax break. If, if you are uh, unemployed and you uh, are eligible for a job, a, a small business can get a tax break if they'll employ you as an unemployed Georgian. You get a, a, you get a, a salary, and you're able to pay your mortgage. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fundamental belief that it's not government that create jobs. It's small businesses. That's what uh, creates the jobs in our country and even in our state. So we're trying to do everything we can. Manufacturing is, is, a, uh, is a part of our state in our state's history that in the past has been strong. We were one of the only states in the southeast that had an energy tax on the carpet mills and the poultry farms uh, and the poultry plants and all the other large manufacturers uh, in Georgia. And that's wrong because that uh, stifles jobs. And so what we did is we removed that energy tax so that companies like Caterpillar will move here and other companies will see Georgia as a positive state, a state to stay in and not be attracted to a, a neighboring state. So again, it gets back to the jobs uh, that we, we will hopefully create through economic growth that will enable a person to become employable so they can pay their mortgage. So I, I, don't, think, I don't think we uh, need to go down the path of uh, creating a stimulus plan for attorneys. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, I think that the system we have uh, is working, but we need to put people back to work. That's the bottom line. If a person has a job and is able to pay that mortgage, then we're, we're in good shape. But that's uh, where we need to get, be as a state. Mm -hmm. Well, bring that home to Paulding County. We do seem to have, a, we do seem to have an issue of attracting businesses to Paulding. Um, uh, I personally, I think it's the road network. You, you can't get to Paulding from anywhere. <laughs> you know? well, and I, I don't know if, if, if there's an answer to that or not. Well, all of West Georgia uh, certainly is a part of where we need to develop a focus on economic growth. And you talk about transportation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one thing that I believe is we need to look at overhauling the Department of Transportation and trying to find out where uh, the revenue sources are within the Department of Transportation first. We don't need tax increases. Tax increases are not the answer to overcoming the economic problems in our state, in our country. But over, uh, over a period of time, we need to look at the Department of Transportation and overhaul that department. And at that point, then we can see where the revenue sources are. And at that point, then we can get a better plan on transportation because you had asked about transportation. Mm -hmm. And many people who live in West Georgia, you know, they drive back and forth between the counties and Atlanta, and they, they uh, need a good system of transportation. So my approach uh, to, to one of these uh, economic growth issues is to try to get a better transportation system by starting out with the Department of Transportation. Uh, funding, uh, funding for roads, uh, you know, our, our funding for everything in the state. Some people would like to go to a sales tax versus a, a property tax to fund the schools. And, and, and that issue keeps going back and forth. Well, should we have a, a sales tax and forget about an income tax? or? How do you feel about that? Well, I've always been an advocate of the fair tax. Uh, I believe it's something we need. Uh, I had a bill that I introduced several years ago, back in 2004, that would have abolished the state income tax and replaced it with a consumption tax, a, okay. a fair tax. Mm -hmm. So I just believe a fair tax is better because it addresses all areas of society and it affects everyone. So I, I strongly believe that we need to move away from the income tax and I will support a measure to create a fair tax. Oh, I always thought personally that the fair tax was, was the way to go because we would capture so much income off of people that are now making a lot of money and the drug, the, it doesn't, the drug people or whoever you want to talk, they're, they're still going to have to pay sales tax. Right. And, uh, when a purchase takes place, that'll, that'll, that person through the consumption tax will be affected. Yeah. And it's just a fair way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, on the education issue, uh, let's return to that a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of interest in, uh, in how, how we promote our trade, uh, our um, technical schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that, you know, I don't, I think we've misled a lot of young people. Everybody doesn't need a college education, right. you know. 
I mean, they need a good high school education, but then they need to go into the trades. Now, I'm not suggesting we go like England, where you get to the eighth grade and they make the decision for you, but I think we, I think that our, our technical schools, we've got several in this area, do a tremendous job of preparing mm -hmm. people to, uh, uh, to make a living. Right. And, uh, I completely agree. I completely agree. I chaired, I was chairman of the Higher Education Committee in the House for five years. And as chairman of that committee, uh, I worked closely with the lieutenant governor. And we have one of o only 15 career academies in the entire state in the Senate district. And it's because I work with the lieutenant governor because I believe in the concept uh, of technical education and career academies. And the, the, the idea of a career academy simply allows high school students to be bused from the high schools to these career academies yeah. where they can learn basics from auto mechanics, uh, dental hygiene. They can learn about uh, plumbing, heating and air conditioning. They can learn about basic skills they can put to work immediately and be employable. And so I have been a fan of vocational education. I was a, a part of the vocational education system back in the 80s, and I knew that it would prepare people for uh, great futures. And so now we're turning our attention to vocational education, again, through the technical colleges. And I believe we have the best. I was actually a teacher at West Georgia Technical College. Okay. I, I taught and right. back in 1996. So I've been there in the classroom. And most of, these, uh, most of these students are a mixture. You have many adults who are going back to school just to learn more and get a little bit better education. So maybe they can uh, pursue a different career path. And then you have the students in high school and right out of high school who are in, in the school as a technical school graduate where they know they can get a skill. Uh, as you said, college is not for everyone, but education is a lifelong journey. That's what I tell everybody. And as long as you're able to either go and get a technical degree or uh, through a, a, a career academy or even a, a public college or university, you're always learning. And I just believe that uh, we're on track. We just need to get more people aware of the fact that we have great, uh, uh, these, these career academies are great programs and the technical college system in the state of Georgia. There are 35 technical schools in the state of Georgia. West Georgia Tech is just one. And actually, West Georgia Tech is the second largest in the university, uh, technical college university system, uh, which really bodes well for us in West Georgia because we have such a strong understanding of how it works. So as, as a state senator and having been chair of the Higher Education Committee, I will always continue to fight to make sure that everybody has an option to, uh, to learn and get a, a basic skill where they can put it to work. On your, um, go back on ethics a little bit. There's been a lot of issues with the mm -hmm. ethics committee and how we handle it and what we do with it. And we put some kind of caps on it. And did we cap everybody at $100, I believe was one proposal. Mm -hmm. how, what's your thinking on that? Well, I fully support ethics reform. Mm -hmm. And back in 2009, uh, I actually co-sponsored a bill, uh, House Bill 980. And the bill would have put a $100 cap on uh, any kind of gift. So I actually supported the concept a long time ago, and now it's come up you know, again, and I'll support it again. But you know, what we need to do is get, uh, uh, people have lost faith in government. They've lost faith in their government officials, and we must reinstill that uh, confidence. And so I'll do everything every day that I can to fight to get special interest out of the way and to put people back in control. Mm -hmm. Because I think the people are are concerned and they've they've lost uh, uh, I guess a point of interest because they see it clouded and I want to do everything I can to make sure the people have the trust and the faith in their government because this is their government uh, you know it's, it's of the people by the people and for the people and the strength of any government rest in the citizens and we've got to restore that trust that public trust was lost and we've got to do everything to restore it. And I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And I always have. I'll always fight to make sure the person out there that believes in government is heard. Everybody's heard that uh, their message can be uh, delivered and that I, as a state senator, Bill Hembry, I will do everything I can to fight for them, to be on their side so that message mm -hmm. is heard by the people. Let's talk a little bit about criminal justice, which 
it's, it's, it's starting to bother me a little bit because I get the feeling that we just want to bury every teenager walking, you know. Matter of fact, I had a discussion with a judge one recently. I won't mention any names. His attitude was, well, the teenagers just throw them in jail. It doesn't matter how, how little their crime was, you know. And it seems like to me we've, um, when I grew up, I mean, you, you could put a cherry bomb in a bell box and blow it up without it being a federal offense. Do you think we've gone a little bit just too far with not giving judges enough freedom to to look at the case and make a decision without not without hard hard guidelines he has to follow? Well, this year uh, we had a complete rewrite, uh, a, a criminal justice reform measure that Governor Deal pushed through the General Assembly this year, and so we voted on it, and we have done the things that you're saying. Because there, there was a, a problem uh, that was perceived with the criminal justice system. But with the passage of this measure this year and the General Assembly this year, mm -hmm. I think we're going to get back to common sense. And I, so, so we've addressed uh, you know, that we issue. We have to turn. I think what everybody wants to see is some common sense return to our political process. Right. And we don't see it. And uh, uh, I'm sure, like you, I got a driver's license at uh, at 16, and I, I didn't have uh, a thousand, well, you, you can't do this, you got to drive this way for right. so long, you can't have anybody in a car, you can't be doing this. When do we expect our kids to grow? How, do we want them to grow up to be 30 before they learn? Well, you, you mentioned the issue of common sense, and, and this year uh, we really have done a few things. We passed Senate Bill 33 this year, uh, which was zero-based budgeting. Now, for those who are not really familiar with the budgeting process in government, you have a continuation budget that is money that just continues on and on in Washington. That is the big problem that exists in Washington because the continuation of the federal government budget has just grown, and the $16 trillion in, in deficits that we have are continuing to cause the problems. In Georgia, though, we've changed that. We must balance our budget, and we passed Senate Bill 33 this year, because what we said, we want all those state bureaucracies to come in every year and start from zero. Mm -hmm. So some program that may have been started in the 1970s or 80s, that bureaucracy, they need to justify that. And we passed the bill again this year, zero-based budgeting. The first two departments will be uh, the Board of Regents and the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. So starting in, uh, in January in the General Assembly, those two departments will have to go from zero. Start from scratch, zero, and then prove to us in the General Assembly and the governor that their budget is sound. So we've done that. Uh, that's a common sense thing. I wish the folks in Washington would take that common sense. But here in Georgia, we believe in common sense. Another thing we did this year, drug testing for welfare recipients. We're requiring that if you're getting welfare, you must be tested for drug use. And that's just a common sense thing that... Uh, should have been done a long time ago. But if you're going to get public assistance, you need to prove that you're deserving of it. And if you're taking drugs, you're not deserving of it. And so we passed that measure this year. Uh, the Government Accountability Act, uh, I think it was House Bill uh, 486, says that the uh, General Assembly and the governor can eliminate departments, can eliminate the bureaucracy. And we already have eliminated one department. It was the uh, State Department of uh, Personnel Administration. It was not needed. It was a duplication of services. It saved the state $2.6 million in this fiscal year alone. Mm -hmm. So we're doing some common sense things, and, and I've been a part of that, and I'm happy to be a part of that. And I think that's, uh, that is why we need to put the people back in control and stand for the people, as I always have, mm -hmm. because those are things I've been fighting for. And I will always fight for those. I will always be on the side of the people. And I think people will realize that those are pretty good ideas. I, you haven't said anything I don't agree with, so we're in pretty good shape there. But um, let's talk about, I know you're, you're on an insurance agency. And, um, and so let's talk just a little bit. I'm a, yeah, I'm a small business person. Yeah. And I have been, uh, and I just believe that the foundation of this country is small businesses. Mm -hmm. I employ five people. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand how uh, difficult it is to, to balance the budget every year. I have to actually do a, a budget and a plan every year mm -hmm. and to make payroll every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I have to make payroll. Uh, so 
I just think that uh, as a small business person, I bring a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's one where I'm actually an employer, a small business person, and I'm doing everything I can to keep the economy mm -hmm. going. And I just think that's a good base to have as a member of the General Assembly yeah, but, because you have a connection. But uh, as small businessmen, I'm a small businessman, we're getting buried by government regulations. And I'm sorry to say this, but God help you if you're try, trying to get a loan from the bank. Mm -hmm. They can tell you 10,000 reasons why they can't loan you money. Uh, you know? And I've seen it hurt a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. right here in our area. Right. You know? Is there anything in the state? What role can the state play in that? Well, the state is trying to do what it can, as I said, to have less regulation, uh, less uh, uh, overburdening of businesses. And that's what we got to keep fighting for. A lot is federally uh, driven, uh, but every day in the General Assembly in Georgia, we're doing what we can because and, and, we need to make Georgia attractive for small businesses and, and large businesses so that people will get employed. Because ultimately, this is about this election is about the future of Georgia and the country. Mm -hmm. And it's about getting people back to work. And it's about turning this economy around. And the only way you can turn this economy around is by, again, uh, the, getting the small businesses, enabling them to start employing people again, to do the things they do best. And that doesn't mean regulating them with just cumbersome uh, uh, burdens of, of regulations and paperwork. Mm -hmm. Let them do what they do best. Mm -hmm. And you know, America is great because it's people's great. And America's great because it has so many people who are entrepreneurs, who have ideas. And if we uh, just let those individuals grow and do what they do best, we're going to turn this around. We really do, will. I, I'm confident in this country, in this state, and I see our bright days ahead. But we've got to get through what we're dealing with now. And we need to do what we can to stop the excess in regulations. And we're doing that on the state level. It's the federal government that has failed. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to ask you an insurance question. And I could be wrong, but correct, please feel free to correct me. Last year, our, our insurance commissioner of insurance, uh, which I believe is a publicly elected office, mm -hmm. gave the insurance company a 24% tax in, uh, 20% increase in, in what they fees. You know? And boy, well, I, I have a lot of people in my neighborhood yeah. that say, hey, wait a minute. Our homeowners insurance gun done not too high. One thing I did, I sponsored a bill. Uh, I was concerned with the commissioner too. The commissioner had actually given himself a license. He just, as commissioner, bestowed upon himself a license uh, for insurance, and that's wrong. Uh, you know, you have to go through a testing process. You have to go through an education process. You have to go through a long process, and then you have to pass. So he just, out of executive order, gave himself one. Well. As a member of the General Assembly, I passed a bill that removed it because no, no public official should be in a position to do that. And so I'm fighting every day to make sure that all, all commissioners or elected officials uh, stay honest and do what the people expect them to do. And, and that's just go through and, and be a, a rightful person to get the public trust. You know, again, it gets back to the point of the public trust. You know, we've got to do everything we can every day to give the people confidence in, in government. And I will do that. Again, I'm, I'm fighting for the people to be on their side. I've got a, a track record of steady, uh, uh, you know, steady uh, honesty and integrity. And so I'll do that every day, and, and I'll continue to be that as, as the state senator for this area. I see uh, in your bio that you've been in travel widely in the United States and travel widely overseas, been in... 30-some-odd countries. What, would, what did you gain from that experience? Well, it's interesting because uh, um, I'm from Winston. Uh, yeah, from, from, I live in Winston, but I'm from Villa Rica. Okay. And I always w think about uh, my dad uh, died when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother worked two jobs for 18 years to feed five kids. I'm the youngest of five. And so as a child, I knew the difficulties uh, that we faced and the hardships we faced because my mother was working so hard just to provide for us. She didn't seek out public health. Uh, she wanted to make sure that we uh, understood that hard work and determination was what made a difference in life. Mm -hmm. So I had to pursue scholarships. Uh, back in that day, there was no hope scholarship, so I had to find a way to get to college. And that's where I was able to go abroad. I always wanted to be an exchange student. You know, 
I wasn't, as a kid, I wasn't able to go on extravagant vacations. We just weren't able to do that. We couldn't afford that. So I thought, you know, uh, if someday I can find a scholarship that would enable me to go and study abroad, I'd like to do that. And so I was able to go and, and study abroad, but uh, I did that because I realized that education was the foundation of everything. And if you can get a solid education, then you can do other things and, and, and be more mobile in life. But again, my mother instilled that in us, and I was the first to graduate from college in my family, the family of really the youngest of five. Mm -hmm. But uh, seeing the world really gives you a great perspective of what a great place we have here mm -hmm. in Georgia. There's no other place like it. Mm -hmm. uh, and having lived abroad and, and seen the world as I have, I'm so thankful to be a Georgian and, most importantly, to be an American. Well, I, mean, I heard you mention the Hope Scholarship. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance of returning full funding to that? Well, you know, we, we have uh, the folks who receive the uh, 3.7 GPA get the Zell Miller Scholarship, which is a full scholarship. Yeah. They get that. That's a 3.7 GPA. And, uh, you know, the whole concept behind HOPE was to reward the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we've made sure that those best, the students who are working hard, the very best, get the uh, Zell Miller Scholarship. And then we've uh, given 90% to those at 3.0 uh, and better. So we've got a great program that's existing. The problem uh, lies in with the university system. Tuition has gone up 200% in the past 10 years, 200%. And with that large increase in tuition, we had to do something to stop that level uh, in the tuition areas. So that's why we focused on uh, making the scholarship uh, at 3.7 uh, for the full scholarship and then tying it in to 90% of the tuition on the other side. That way it's, it's there, it's going to be there, it's going to be viable for many, many years to come. And I think that's the key is we have to make it viable. You know, uh, again, government doesn't provide the solutions for everything. It's uh, the private sector and small businesses and people working hard every day. And what we wanted to do is something that would keep an education opportunity viable for many years to come. Well, uh, correct me again if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that uh, when we put the lottery together, a lot of people opposed that, but we put it together. My father was not an advocate of the lottery. But all the funding that the state received from the lottery was supposed to go to the whole politician. Well, now they've diverted that funds for other... No, it was originally set up for three areas. It was set up for the pre-K program, pre-K program. Mm -hmm. It was set up for the HOPE scholarship, and it was set up for what they call it technology. So there is that misnomer that it was all going to HOPE. Originally in the, in the, uh, the measure that was drafted uh, by Zell Miller back in the 90s, the money would go to those three areas. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that uh, half of the money goes to pre-K. Uh, those are the four-year-old uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So if you drive around the communities, you see a lot of uh, these uh, programs. So uh, a lot of the funding goes to the pre-K. Then the scholarship gets some of the money, which we all think of as getting all of the money, but it doesn't. And then the other area is technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's, uh, that's something that we want to keep going and keep operative. Okay. Well, and kind of wrap it up here. We can talk for hours, but, I mean, if you want to... Um, do you have anything you'd like to particularly uh, bring to the table? Well, again, I'm going to fight every day uh, for everybody. And again, I'm going to be on the people's side. I always have and I always will. And I'm just committed to being a good public servant, uh, to be there every day, uh, steady, trustworthy, and to fight for the citizens of West Georgia because I believe in that and I believe in the people. So I'll do everything I can to cut out waste in government spending. We have too much of that. I try to cut taxes. And most importantly, uh, try to get some jobs so we can get our families back to work. Mm -hmm. Getting our families back to work mm -hmm. and getting our economy stimulated, that is the core of what I will do as a state senator. Well, it appears the state has done a fairly good job with trimming budgets. Um, I know Hiram and our cities out here have done it. They trim the budgets. They've done both. Mm -hmm. but done, done a good job. I don't think you can complain, you know. But I sure appreciate your service. And Thank you very much. Thank you very for much, the opportunity. Sir, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. This has been Interviews to Suit, the Peacom TV production.